Hello, this is Miss Cindy from the Alexandria Museum of Art. Welcome to another AMOA Family Friday. Today we are going to be reading a book called The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew Daywall. Now, let's see what happened. Why did the crayons quit? One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on them. Uh-oh. Hey, Duncan. It's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than all any of your other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out. Coloring fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Okay, Red's kind of upset. Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favorite crayon for grapes and dragons and wizard's hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous color goes outside the lines. If you don't start coloring inside the lines soon, I'm going to completely lose it. Your very neat friend, Purple Crayon. Well, y'all, I think Purple Crayon needs to relax a little bit. There's nothing wrong with coloring a little bit outside the lines. I'm just saying. Art teacher truth, okay? Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I am neither. I am beige and I am proud. And I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair. The brown gets all the bears, pant, ponies, and puppies, while I only get things like our turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when it was the last time you saw a kid excited about coloring wheat, he's got a point. He looks, he looks very sad. Okay. Duncan. Gray crayon here. You're killing me. I know you love elephants, and I know that elephants are gray, but that's a lot of space to color in all by myself. And don't even get me started on your rhinos, hippos, and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling all of those, one of those things? Such big animals. Baby penguins are gray, you know, and so are very tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Your very tired friend, Gray Crayon. Gray's exhausted. Okay. Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? Most of the time, I'm the same color as the page you're using, using me on. White. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to color snow or fill an empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, White Crayon. Okay, look, y'all. Here's the thing. Let me give y'all a little sort of teaser about what we're going to do. I'm going to give y'all some tips later on in the video about how you can use that White Crayon. I think Mr. White Crayon will be very excited. All right, back to the book. Hey, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things that are colored in by other colors, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then you fill in the colors, the ball, the colors of the ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, black crayon. Like crayons, these crayons are not happy, y'all. Dear Duncan, as green crayon, I am writing for two reasons. One is to say, I like my work. Loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs, and frogs. I have no problems. And wish to congratulate you on a very successful coloring things green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends, yellow crayon and orange crayon, who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons feel they should be the color of the sun. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, Green Crayon. 
Oh, I'm glad that there's a crayon that's happy. Dear Duncan, yellow crayon here. Uh-oh, what's going on? I need you to tell our orange crayon that I am the color of the sun. I would tell him, but then we are no longer speaking. And I can prove I'm the color of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun on your Happy Farm coloring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true color of the sun, yellow crayon. Oh gracious, a little drama here. Uh oh, y'all, look who it is. Dear Duncan, I see yellow crayon already talked to you. The big whiner. Anyway, could you pl please tell Mr. Tattletail that it, that he is not the color of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I am clearly the color of the sun because on Thursday, you used me to color the sun on both the Monkey Island and the Meet the Zookeeper pages of your Day at the Zoo coloring book. Aren't you glad I'm here? Ha! You're a pal and the real color of the sun. Orange crayon. Well, I don't know if that proves anything. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favorite color this past year and the year before and the year before that. I really enjoyed all those oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds, and clear skies. But the bad news is that I am so short and stubby I can't even see over the railing in the crayon box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, Blue Crayon. Ooh, see, he's very tiny. I don't know if he's gonna make it. Duncan, okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once in the past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's color, isn't it? Speaking of which, Please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color her little princess coloring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now, back to us. Could you please use me sometime to color the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows, they could use a splash of color. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Yeah, anybody can use pink, right? Hey Duncan, it's me, Peach Crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapping? Now I'm naked and too embarrassed to leave the crayon box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? I need some clothes, help. Your naked friend, Peach Crayon. Oh gracious, oh dear. Well, poor Duncan just wanted to color, and of course he wanted his crayons to be happy, and that gave him an idea. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him an A for coloring and an A plus for creativity. All right, well, Duncan did a great job making his colors happy. So let's think about some ways that we can make the colors happy. Now I gave you a hint while I was reading that I'm gonna show you some ways to use the white crayon that maybe you hadn't thought about. And well, and maybe we can do some other things, some creative things with the color as well. In fact, I think it might make the colors very happy if we created some color harmonies. Now, color is one of the elements of art and we've been reviewing them. So let's give the elements of art a quick review for those of you who are looking at my videos for the first time, and then we're gonna start thinking about color harmonies. Artists use the elements of art to create amazing works of art. The first element is line, like the lines that Walter Anderson used to create these fish and its scales in his woodcut. And lines create shapes like the shapes that Nicholas Monroe used to create his dancers in this painting. A three-dimensional shape is a form, like the form of this Dale Chihuly glass sculpture. 
In this Amy Guidry painting, she actually suggests form by using another element called value. Value is the darks and lights in an artwork, like those in this Elmore Morgan Sr. photograph. Value can also be used to create a mood in a painting, like the spooky somber mood in the Steamboat painting by George Rodriguez. Another valuable tool that artists use is color. Francis Pave uses color to create depth and interest as well as mood and energy in this painting. All of the elements we've talked about so far can be used to create space. Space refers to the space inside an object, the positive space, and the space outside of the object, the negative space. Look at how artist Arthur Secunda energizes the space around this figure using color, line, and shape. Last element is texture. Texture refers to how something looks like it might feel. Notice the bumpy texture of the feathers in this Morris Taft Thomas piece. Now, let's talk about how to use color harmonies to help the crayons get along and work together happily. Color harmonies are color combinations that artists use to create different effects and moods that are pleasing to the eye. One example of a color harmony are warm colors, orange, red, yellow. Next, we have the cool colors, blue, purple, and green. Next, we have the primary colors. All of the other colors are made from primary colors. They are red, yellow, and blue. Mix the primary colors together and you get the secondary colors orange, purple, and green. Yellow and red make orange. Blue and yellow make green. And blue and red make purple. Complementary color harmonies are formed by colors across from each other on the color wheel. Red and green are complementary colors, blue and orange, and yellow and purple. If we mix together primary and secondary colors, we get tertiary colors like red-orange, orange-yellow, yellow-green, blue-green, blue-violet, and red-violet. These colors form the color wheel. Now let's talk about our neutral colors. They aren't part of the color wheel, but they're very important. We have black and white that make gray, and then we have brown. Now let's use some of these color harmonies to draw a picture that will help the crayons get along. The first thing you're going to need are some crayons. Next, you're going to need a pencil. You'll need a pair of scissors, and some watercolors. Inexpensive watercolors are just fine. And then a couple of pieces of paper and a piece of black construction paper if you want. Now, you're going to fold your piece of paper along the edge, lining the corner up with the edge, and if you have a hard time with this, you can get a grown-up to help you, but basically what we're doing is we're making a square piece of paper. If you already have a square piece of paper, you don't have to do this, but it's a useful trick to learn. Now we're going to Trace the line right there along the edge, at the bottom edge. I'm going to trace that line, hold that paper down firmly, and trace that edge. Now that gives us a line that we can cut along. And we're just going to cut that, and now we have a nice square piece of paper. Now you're going to learn to draw a dinosaur one shape at a time. We're going to start with drawing a half circle. So that's just a line with a little curve underneath it. Now you're going to draw the head just over one of the corners by drawing an oval. Okay, now we're gonna draw the neck and you're gonna connect the head with one line to the corner of your circle and then you're gonna do a slanty line right next to it and it makes sort of a triangle with sort of a flat top. Next, we're gonna do a curve for the tail, one going up and then another one coming back down. 
and you're going to make some rectangles for the legs. Now you can pause this if you need to catch up. Make a circle for the eye, and then I like to do another circle inside of that circle to make a little pupil. Then I'll draw a curve for a smile. Now I'm going to draw some triangles along the dinosaur's back to make it kind of like a stegosaurus. That's the one with the triangles on the back, right? You guys let me know if I'm wrong about that. And then a couple on the head, so it goes all the way along his back. And I'm going to put my dinosaur in an environment, a place. So I'm thinking my dinosaur might be somewhere outside, maybe near a tree. Now your dinosaur could be anywhere. It could be in the water, it could be on a boat. You decide what you want your dinosaur to do. Use your imagination. And when we're doing this, don't worry about making your drawing perfect. Just have fun with it. Consider every time you make a drawing, it's like practice. So now I'm gonna use a ruler and I am going to make an X on my page. So we are creating sections for the different color harmonies. So I made an X and now I'm going to make a cross on my page. The lines don't have to be perfect. Now you're going to have several sections that you can experiment with some color harmonies inside of. I'm going to start with cool colors. So remember what the cool colors were. They were green, blue, and purple. So I'm going to use those in my first section. Now, you don't have to color things realistically. Like maybe the dinosaur was green, but maybe it was orange. We don't know, so I'm going to just experiment in different parts. Now clouds aren't usually yellow, but that's okay because this is my warm color section. So I'm just going to experiment with those colors. And as you do this, think about how the different colors seem to work together. Can you guess what color harmony I'm doing now? I started with some green. And I moved to some purple and then some orange. What color harmony is that? That's right, it's my secondary colors. Now I'm moving to another section. Try to guess what color harmony I'm using. That's red and blue and yellow. Primaries. Now I'm moving to another section. This time, I'm gonna go ahead and give those neutrals a chance to shine. I've colored my dinosaur gray, and I've colored the bottom of my tree brown, and I'm going to color the ground black. Now, you can use any color harmonies you want in here. Mix them up however you'd like to. You don't have to do exactly the ones I did. All right, so now let's guess what this one is. Orange and blue. Well, those are my color complementary colors. I've decided to do that for a few of them. So if I'm using green right now, what's the complementary color for green? That's right, it's red. Okay. One more set of complementary colors, that's purple and right, yellow. Okay, so now I have created some color harmonies. I think that probably made the crayons very happy. They all got a turn to shine. What art elements do you think we use today? I see two right away. Oh, three, color, shape, and line. Now, I promised you some cool tricks on how to use a white crayon. Now, you may know this already, but you may not. White crayon draws really nicely on black construction paper or any dark colored construction paper. But there's an even better magic trick that it does. Okay, so I've got a piece of white paper. 
You can use just like a heavy sketch paper or some watercolor paper. This is just a regular drawing paper. Now you can't see what I've just drawn, right? You can't see it at all. However, I'm going to get out some of these watercolors and I am going to brush across where I drew that. And just like magic, my drawing appears. That's one of my favorite tricks to do with white crayons. You can make some really beautiful designs. So I encourage you to experiment with that a little and make some magic drawings with your white crayon. Hey, thanks for joining me for another AMOA Family Friday video. And I hope you had fun doing the art activity today. And join us next week for more fun art activities. See you soon.